Greetings viewers at home and welcome on another epic episode of The Red Show. So we talk about love, lies, truth and pain. Your number one TV talk show in the entire globe. We got Petros Kosa, also known as Go Daddy. Today in Sula, I'm joined by this phenomenal guest. You can see she's shaking her shoulders already. <laughs> hey, Bongiwe. Founder of Butterfly Projects underscore SA, a support group for depression and self harm. I'm pleased to be here with you today on David on TV. Oh, yes. Who is founder? You know, she's doing multiple things. Um, I just want to say this now. Women have a phone now over a multi millionaire. You need to generate a certain or several incomes, you know, streams of income so that you can reach a popular home. But women have a job in a nine to five, you will never make it in life. And you also have a support group. It is a dealer. So, come on, I'm going to tell you she's a victim of a depression, you know. Survivor. Oh, not, not a victim. No. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, so yeah, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that. Pen, thank you. Chati Pepper, thank you. Sit down. Then it's the entire Yes, can you get me now? John Shirika, Momo Petros Koza, Momo Tuala, Momo David on TV, Momo YouTube. Momo Fulukuma, I'm personal. It's a car, Momo Tuala. <laughs> yeah, Anana, um, uh, I think by now we spoke a lot uh, over the phone about um, the Simones and I saw these three of statuses and everything yes. and that's how I picked you up, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you this, Gusho Yam, I only bring a band from the age of 24 upwards mm -hmm. and I, I think I told you that. Yes. So this is my first time hosting on that one, but hey, I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, it yeah. So tell me, you say you were a survivor I am. of a depression. Yes. Okay. In, in your own experience, what is depression? Okay, from my understanding, depression is it's a matter where you look at things from black and white and not gray. It's failing to see the blessings and the curses. Like people will say that depression is always being sad, it's negative thinking. I think being depressed means you can't balance between negative and positive. So from my experience, I was depressed because I couldn't understand everything that was going on, like the bad things. And I couldn't take into account the good that was happening. I was focused on the negative and that made me very depressed. Yes. We can make it, maybe as a practical again. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how to focus on the internal, you know, we don't see that. As you make it practical, we can have multiple to focus on the negative that you have to make it right. Specific, we can have more than the negative that you Okay, like, in Pilaniami, I've faced a lot of things. I've, faced, I've lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I think after losing my mommy and my twin, I couldn't understand, I couldn't look at the collateral beauty okay. of things. Meaning, Ugoti, there's a, there's a beauty in death, and okay. I couldn't see that. Okay. So, I always base my life like on losing the people that I love. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, losing the, and then I was looking at the black. In white and not understanding the in-between that was going on so yeah I was very depressed because of that I thought it was my fault I didn't deserve to have people that I love in my life I kept losing people and then I had to understand that everyone will leave at the end you know yeah, everyone will yeah, die and yeah, this time that we have we are borrowed it's not ours true so I was really really like confused about everything I wasn't in, I wasn't in touch with reality so yeah yeah no, it's a matter of seeing things in a black or a white scale, but not being able to mix them into a gray scale where you can check things like, oh, it's okay, and so a parent and then, we show you which is beauty in death. You know, uh, one man said, uh, you know, not one man, actually, I was reading the, 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 the poem, uh, my angel, then I later on went to YouTube, and I read where I could not put it down with my means, you know, which my wife was very simple. And it fell into one day she was called to come to the hospital where she spoke to my wife was in Canada because of so so from Katel. So technically she believes that she she liberated Umawaki or the Aham the Iron Pumula. So when mostly there's beauty in death, specifically in terms of empty or understand, how can you explain the beauty of death? Okay, if there wasn't death, we wouldn't fail in life. True. Right. So the beauty of death it enables you to appreciate life. Okay. Exactly. 
So if death what didn't exist, we wouldn't appreciate life. Meaning that if no one died, like we would be leaving a very I wouldn't say valueless or worthless life, yeah, I would say. Yeah. So I found beauty in death because when my mother died, I, I learned to understand that every person should be valued. But before that, I couldn't understand. I was always like trapped in, in my thinking and my negativity of death being, death being darkness and all of that. But there is some brightness in it. So we need to understand that. Mm. Yeah, so like a boy, always uh, there's no gain uh, without loss, you know. Um, mm. Um, mm. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to And to your point, you know, there's beauty in death. I think you've enlightened me somehow. Buti. Without loss, there's no gain. And if exactly there was no death, we wouldn't value people. Wouldn't. So today we value people because of females. Yes. One day they may leave us. Yes. You know, and see this, you see, sure, uh, you you realize when it's gone. You know. Yeah. So uh, in, after everything, so uh, between uh, I'm, I'm sorry about your mother. Between and uh, uh, in a sense, so rest in peace. Okay. Yes. So, Master Gwendolyn, what happened? Mortal focus into the darkness, you know, mortal born in you know, in a different perspective from the way it was before they died. What happened in the Okay, the symptoms started kicking in. One would be oversleeping. Sure. Most of depressed people oversleep because sleep is like an elusive death. So when you're sleeping you don't need to feel, sure. you don't need to see, you don't need to cry. Sure. So that's why we tend to sleep a lot. Okay. People don't understand that. We tend to sleep a lot because we don't want to feel, we don't want to see, we don't want to think. So that started and I started losing interest in everything, like everything that I liked because I felt as if it didn't give my life meaning. Sure. Secondly, suicidal thoughts. I thought that dying would mean taking a break from everything, you know, finding peace, which was not true. And I just started pushing everyone away, everyone that was happy because as soon as you lose someone, it is personal and everyone moves on and then you get angry and like why bang is on why is everyone like moving on? Who to child as if my mother didn't die? Like that's what it comes up to. But then you need to understand that it's the world doesn't owe you anything. It does not owe you anything. Life itself is like it's your membership that you can't cancel. Sure. You can't the more problems you face, it's like lifting weights and then the more you lift, the stronger you become. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm. I, we are like, I think we're doing it. I think we're um, I think today we're learning, you know. And, and, and it's so beautiful that I'm learning from this kid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yo, I'm learning, I'm learning. But yeah, I'm going to be able to see what I'm going to see. Come on, on Facebook page, to be David on TV, and comment below about the situation. What happened when someone close to you died? And you know, we have a problem of when we are 10th. We expect everyone to mm, feel what we feel. feel. And I think, you know, it, 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 it's a good thing when you should look at it. Life doesn't evolve around your personal issues. Yes, the world doesn't own anything. You know, and not what we should do, but by baby people. And you can't blame people for that. You know, and, and, and I think that's a very beautiful point. It made a lot of people who are talking about it. And we don't owe you anything. And it's in the pool, and I think that's why we're going to get it. You know, yeah, because I think that's what we're suffering from. We want everyone to cry when we're mourning. And forgetting what about you, they don't know our shoes and they have their own lives. There's something you said, uh, life is a membership or cancer. Yes, gym mm. membership is very hard to cancel. Oh, yes. Yes. We have a kind. 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 Or so busy because you which when you are depressed or when you are in depression, there's always that one person who's gonna care much, and eventually, the more you start healing, they are the people who are gonna form it your kid, your boy, and it's either gonna lose that friend forever and, and all that. Yes, number one, it's not only a single example. Okay, I wouldn't say family because they want, they want like the going away of what was going on. Yes. As much as they were, maybe we were ignorant, I don't know. But there was a friend, Naya, she was depressed. Okay. Mariana Kesaki was very severe. 
So basically, Mazan, you know, the thing with the, a broken person can't heal another broken person. True. So yeah, now she used to self harm. Slimazana mentally, like we fed each other, isn't just right? Yeah. Yeah. So now I was self harm and I'm not telling myself harm. Like, I think so, it was a young in, in, in the self harm specifically, what was happening? I used to cut myself, my wrist, my thighs, because self harming is another way of coping. You know, okay. we spend so much coping and not healing. We cope so much. So self harming is another way of expressing what you feel, mm. because means was katala. It just means the figure wearing colors of Sinai in the film. So it's hard to explain in the Ongas now with the Philadelphia. So most Katile, at least as you see, in things as you see, is the in Exactly. So it's giving yourself a reason to feel or understand why Uzi why Uzi Zwalanje. You know, you know, this life thing, I, I, don't, I don't get it. You know, we, we grew up um, taught, let's go, we go to people who cut themselves. I think that worship. <laughs> you know, and we grew up in a silver server, but the means that they were not even here. You really? know, yeah, no, we were like, we're such a channel. Devil worshippers, because of the other part of the machine, who was holding number one, they got two million, number two, they got a good number. Oh, yeah. So, time and again, and now we see the window, oh, you can beg. But I'm a team at a certain age where we were schooled and you know, somewhat informed. But no, it's not as, as you say, you know. Mm -hmm. I think now in Africa, today you've found the reason why. Because when you have a class, they have to and about the body scene, and at least they have physical pain they can show you because of they can't express how they feel from within, you know. And every cut in you were only cold. Only cold. But not healing. Not healing. So, how did it lead to your healing? Okay, the only thing that led me into the roots of healing yes. was healing other people. I found healing in healing. Okay. So I met other people who told me their stories and they were worse. Things you can't even talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's when I understood that I needed to count my blessings before I could count my curses, if I should say so. So it's like a saying. I used to complain about having no shoes until I met someone who had no feet. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I met other people who had stories that were worse. That, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then I understood that I had so much more to cherish than to be pain, pained or just hurt about. So I started there and I started healing people and through that healing I found my healing. Sure. I became the mentor I wish I had. Oh yes. Exactly. So I started talking to people and by then I understood what life was, life as a whole. And I started reading about this mental illness because you can't heal something you don't know. Exactly. So I started reading about it, depression, signs, and everything that involved healing. And I enforced those activities on myself so I could see if it worked, and it did. And then I started helping other people using them. Okay. And then that's where I found my healing. You, you see, sometimes life will throw you in a in a pit, you know. And when it throws you in a pit, it's only for you in the pit to find yourself, but not to harm you. And one would say pit stands for a lot of things, but may not say to you or tonight or today or this morning. And as we in a question pit stands for prophet in training. So when you are in a pit, just need to be a prophet in training. And sometimes life will throw you a millennium of vultures, not for you to be charged, but for you to go to the global vulture, Omega and Jan. So don't ever sit back with the situation that you're going through, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think I relate somehow with your story. And also, uh, to say this, you see, people who heal others, they are the most people who are broken. Exactly. You sometimes know? you need to carry the people that you rely on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a story of a man who was chopping 30 trees every day after he was hired, you know, he was given an X 30 by day, 30 by day, two weeks later he did 20 by day, the other, you know, week uh, later he did 10, up until the other week we started doing one tree a day, and uh, the guy asked him, what happened, you know, because of you were doing 30 a day, now you're doing one, and he's like, I don't know what happened, but I'm still using the very same X that you gave me, you know, mm -hmm. and the guy asked him, okay, but do you ever take time to sharpen the X now, you know, it's still new, you know. So I think we take too much time in cutting the trees instead of shutting the eggs, you know. Because of most of them, about our depression, you take a notice, you know, 
Then, my second is the okay, so I can understand that. But coming out of depression is the most challenging it's thing changing. that has ever happened, yeah. you know? And what can you say to someone who's going through that situation much? Because they're not as born, and I'm not about depression, but I'm not about that either, you know? Like, I'm not going to feel like, I'm not going to get you know? Yeah, but the don't tag you, I'm not going to get you, I'm not going to get you. So what can you say to someone who's going through Okay, what I can say is that the first step of healing is accepting what you, what you feel and knowing what it is. So first you need to accept that you're depressed. Because there's a difference, you can be sad for a day, a week, but when it's depression, it becomes year, years, you start pushing people away. So you need to acknowledge what you feel first. And then secondly, you need to find someone you can talk to, someone you trust, someone you, you love. And thirdly, you need to consider the consequences if ever you try to commit suicide because suicide doesn't stop your pain, it prolongs it onto someone else. So if I kill myself today, you might feel well, I you must start being depressed because of me. So it doesn't stop the pain, it prolongs it to someone else. So consider those factors. And fourthly, I would like to say that always look for the collateral beauty. You know, it's hard when someone tells you, someone who's never been depressed says, it's going to be okay. You're like, when? Because the question you're asking yourself is when? So yeah. always look for the collateral good in everything and ask yourself the big why. You know, people do things for three reasons. It's death, life, and love. Okay. There's a reason why you came here today. Sure. There's a reason why you're at work today, not because you get fired, but because there's a big why. Really you know, sure. We fear death. We all want to be loved. And we all wish we had more time. Sure. So consider those abstracts and always focus on the good things mm. instead of the bad. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Which this is a it's a it's a, it's a full sermon, you know. <laughs> and if I was in church, standing up, put my envelope or fire basket, wait <laughs> for the pastor and leave. But yes, I think it's it's high time we come uh, to a level where we start teaching people and showing people steps of how to be happy. You know, because of most of us, we want to be here when we have achieved something. That the journey of happiness begins the day you embark in a journey of achieving that thing. And because of we want to be happy when we reach our destination, depression puts us along the journey of, 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 of reaching our destination. Because of money, we get more. And even in which I would have figure more. But it takes a big shy system. You know, that's what happens with, 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 with most of us. And about about depression, about denial, what can you say to them? They, they just need to be true to themselves. Zinini isn't just contributor to a person being depressed and a person denying that they're depressed. Sure. Because I think in the end, we are depressed, we place our lives on this into this pillar, into this pillar, man. Okay. Because when I can't say anything, and then start to say something. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to see that as a way maybe of God or ancestors or whatever supernatural thing you believe in. Sure. As their way of protecting you. What if Leon Motor is a chase and next people Okay. So I think we need to look at that and always the routine and just focus and always know what you some correct. Acknowledge your feelings that way you could know what you're depressed or not and always accept what you feel despite so, so what you're saying is people should learn to see beauty mm -hmm. in, everything. in everything no matter how the punch painful is exactly. but people should learn to see beauty in it but how how, how do you how do you say one must learn to see beauty you know i know we spoke about beauty in there, beauty in all of that but how does one see uh beauty when the mind is not stable when everything shuts down, you know, it's more for this courage when you, you're pregnant, you know. The world doesn't know, but you know. And you start embracing something that nobody sees. Then when you lose that, and I come and say to you, uh, then to see beauty in it. Maybe what is this practical thing that you can say beside the theory part of it? Okay, what I would say is 
you need to learn to nurture your mind. It's all about interpersonal conflict. Okay. It all starts with you. Before you can interact with anyone, sure. you need to strengthen yourself. Keep on doing the things you love. If you ever have to write whatever you love on your, on what you love about you, on a notebook or anywhere, just do that. Do things that once made you happy. Okay. Do them again and find peace in that. Sure. And understand that in whatever you do, about that you watch out. Yes. People will never be satisfied with whatever you do. Your parents and your watch out what say. Like they will never be enough. And the only thing that was saying about accept and to see you about that was just I keep the pressure. And then you start feeling nothing. Why are you connecting with Fila? Why are you just saying you them? Because they're not educated, they're not exposed to these things. Exactly. So we need to focus on the roots before we can cut down the trees. Focus oh, on the roots yes. of the problem. That's why they say preventing is better than that's curing. Not, exactly. exactly. Mm. So that's my advice to anyone who feels as if they want this. Mm. Start by you. Be selfish if you have to. Like be selfish. If you know what's my learning better than I can share, I can call you exactly. Because people will use you as a leather to, to fix whatever. When we meet up higher, we're helping everyone, everyone is getting their stuff done. Mm. And then you get the person to no. Yeah. You know Start what? Twenty twenty then? Twenty twenty. You should over next week, yeah? Mm -hmm. Be selfish. Be selfish. About yourself about your feelings only be selfish to put everyone on delay but be selfish about things you love you know exactly. and uh and you start valuing yourself you know remove a band who are worthless never ever delay de elevate yourself to meet a standard so open to work because of once you get here they're gonna work on you and make you feel like it's a choice that you take a, a benefit away. I can't do it about it. And last, I think there's something which you do if you love writing, if you love, you know. I think it's, yeah, also come to a point with anything now. Tell about Nyas and Kukwine. Nyas go to another place. You know, it's okay. But that it doesn't mean you you cannot have a channel. That doesn't mean you you can't have a paper written. I love myself. We place the whole day. That doesn't mean you can't cast the picture of a beautiful house that you love with a whole day. You know, have a vision board, you know. Have something as was always more clear. Have people who are gonna motivate you time and again than having people who are gonna, you know, who gonna remind you. Mm -hmm. Gandhi, you yeah. yeah. So I think if, if we can have that, then we're done. Have have a beautiful circle of people that will support you. It's not wrong to cut out people who say they are no matter yes. how important they are. Mm -hmm. If they are not worth it, yeah. they're not. You know, um, Nana, you said a lot. And let us talk about the support group. Yeah. Yes, you have a support group. Yes. In Kamala, you say, Butterfly Projects underscore SA. Butterfly Projects underscore SA. Nenza, Nago Butterfly. We talk, we focus on activities that help people with self harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, self harm in that department. And we try to give everyone who looks depressed and sad a purpose in life because that's what they like. Sure. So it's Lapo and we teach people that it's not whatever you are not what happens to you. Sure. You're not defined by what happened to you. You are defined by the choices you made today. Sure. Not what happened to you yesterday. Amen. So it's all about mental health. You need to understand the spiritual health because in Rondo, in Rondo is something else. Sure. You can say depression is a mental illness, mm -hmm. but it's also spiritual. Because you need to understand that your human spirit does not care what happened to you. You may have been raped, molested, your human spirit doesn't care what happened to you. Because your human spirit simply asks what are your commands for tomorrow, what do you hope to create. Your mind is just there to keep you safe and that's why it reminds you of what happened to you. Mm. So don't focus so much on your mind, focus on your human spirit. Because it's always there on you. You know what? <laughs> I drink to that cup. Yes. <laughs> so if one want to talk to you, you know, if one wanna join the support group like myself, I'm gonna join, you know. And nice. others that I know. Yes, um how how can they get hold of you? Okay, so it is only now that it has been made digital. So it will Facebook, it's butterfly project underscore SA. It's a group, not a page. So okay. you need to ask to permission to enter and then we'll enter the group. We talk and you can also send me an email, at gmail four oh four at gmail.com. So that's where we talk and engage and we host events, meet ups, and we talk all about everything that we're facing. Mm. So you do that right? I am. At the age of? 18. Oh. On 8. 
So imagine when I have 24 hours call, right? 24. And but if you wish which you can change, you can do better. There's always something beautiful about everyone. You see, my mother is one person who talks like nobody's business, but you can be. You know, so in everything negative, try to find beauty in it. You're not a product of your environment. Exactly. You are a product of your mind. Anything you touch your mind, you can achieve. Well, as long as I'm saying. Yeah. You know, and we love you. May God do you well. And may you have a happy, 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 prosperous New Year. And listen, 2020. New beginnings. 2020. New beginnings. New life. New beginnings. 2020. Best for you, Sandy. This is a very breakfast. A pale. Nazim. English breakfast. Exactly. You know, Edrini. Shy for a knife. Edrini. Alone. See as Tanda, as if I was a baby Helen. See, guys, I'm just a big booger. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I'm challenging. Just, just. Helen, I'm gonna show you the high. I want to hear you. And I'll check it. I'll check it in the last ten years, okay? Yeah. You're on blog. Yeah. So do it, do it. It's all about ourselves, guys. Because if you don't go to that level, we're still gonna complain about everything. If you are kind, thank you. Sit down, but check how your kindness benefits you. Yes. Because of Tina. Si fulu pa wa ndaba lumi, mwaba si fulu wa zwa mwabuluga, pa ati edo bebe sa mtani sa kumbi. We love you, may God bless you. Shalom.